since mankind first ventured into space. Although there had been suffering from occasional civil wars and unrest, mankind now prized its great peace and prosperity. Planet Solent, located near the center of the galaxy, was the 11th world to be colonized by humans, and it was about to be visited by a new and unknown life form. This is Control House. Do you need me? Over. Report target's condition. Over. Target? What target? That's just rocks, not enemy. Huh? Life readings? Holy shit! 31 years after the Zakarite Civil War, mankind is about to confront a new threat. A threat from the darkest corner of the universe. Until Wind Squid is released, in fact, until Wind Squid is actually developed, we're just going to have to settle for great shooting games like Sylphid on the PlayStation 2. There's not much settling here, this game is actually quite good. I've played Sylphid on the PC in the late 80s. I recently reviewed Sylphid for the Sega CD which was a tremendous game. This is Sylphid on the PlayStation 2. Sylphid, the Lost Planet. In this game, an entire planet has been lost. The invading aliens got drunk, came home from the bar, put it in the corner of their room, threw their jacket over it, and uh, forgot it was there for a week. Until one of their friends came over and tried to sit on it. And that's the sequel to this game. Sylphid, planet found, but squashed. most shooting games, the plot of Sylphid the Lost Planet is not a dramatic tour de force of writing, but it's entertaining enough and they give you some nice cutscenes to tell the story in between each stage of the game. The story is somewhat cliched, but it works out. There's an alien invasion, they've, they've destroyed one of the colony planets, or they've you know, done something really bad to it. Your Earth Defense Forces, or whoever the hell they are, launch missiles at it, and, and uh, well, well, you know, you'll see all this in the cutscenes, and you should play the game, because the cutscenes are very well done. And the game, although not one of the greatest shooters ever made, is solid, it's well done, it's very affordable today. And on the PlayStation 2, the gameplay and the graphics are excellent. My biggest gripe about this version of Sylphid is that the music is, is really subpar for a, for a shooting game like this. The music soundtrack on the Sylphid for Sega CD was incredible. That's the kind of music you could put in your car and roll down the windows and drive to. This game sounds like they, they ran out of money, they went to the stock music library of cliched video game songs and uh, just, just pulled out a few of them. None of it's matched very well to the action on screen, but that's a minor detail. The gameplay overall is fun. The graphics are very nice, so it's good to see a shooter like this up updated to a modern game system, like the PlayStation 2, even though this game is several years old now. It came out in the year 2000. You don't pick up weapon power-ups as you're flying around like you do in the Sega version. You earn your weapon upgrades as you progress through each stage, and you can you can mix and match each weapon for your left and right um, weapon. I particularly enjoy this cutscene. I think they did an incredible job with the missiles and uh, you know, the smoke in the wake of the missiles. That looks really nice.
say, Jove? That can't be a shield. No known shield can withstand ISCM. Now, everybody knows that if you're going to try to take down an energy field surrounding a planet or a moon, you don't just shoot missiles at it. You have to steal a shuttlecraft from the enemy, land on the planet, befriend a bunch of children in uh, furry outfits, then go after the shield generator with rocks, stones, and a couple sticks with rocks actually attached to them. Because no matter how technologically advanced an enemy is, or no matter how many heavily armed, monstrous walking machines with guns bristling all over the place they might have, if you attack them with sharp sticks and maybe uh, some logs tied to trees to swing down and crush them, you'll easily defeat the enemy and then be able to destroy the shield generator. This guy's a pretty challenging end boss and somewhat creative as, as well. He seems to be riding inside of a tire. Like, who are the guys that come up with these end bosses? Because every, pretty much every style of end boss has been done to this point in video gaming. So it's like they just come up with really random ones. Like, okay, let's put the alien in a tire. What are they gonna do for the next game? They're gonna have to put him in a tire swing. As I'm working on my science fiction vertical scrolling shooting game called Wind Squid, I look up to these designers. I'm being inspired by games like Sylphid. So the end bosses in Wind Squid, instead of riding in a tire, they might be on a seesaw. Or they could be playing in a pit of fun balls. And as your spaceship, the Wind Squid, approaches them with lasers blasting, the alien end boss pops out of the pit of multicolored fun balls, spewing children everywhere, and throws fun balls at you in different patterns and formations and you have to guide Wind Squid through the fun balls, under the curvy slide, past the seesaw. As you navigate the jungle gym, you shoot a couple plasma rays through the merry-go-round and into his head. Then Wind Squid enters hyperspace and flies to the next level. The hypnotic candy cane forest full of malt liquor powered alligator robots that transform into toasters with laser beams. Let's get back to Sylphid, the Lost Planet. And like Sylphid on the Sega CD, your spaceship doesn't explode if you catch one shot. You have a shield on the top right, you can see it. It goes down in increments when you get hit, and you only have one life. So when, you, when your shield runs out, you explode, you die, you lose the game. You can get continues, which is nice, so you can practice on the different end bosses until you get them right. But in order to get the highest score, you do have to start from the beginning and work your way through the whole game. There's many similar elements to Sylphid on the Sega CD. We have the hyperspace level back here. Now, not talking about the end bosses, but the waves of enemies that come at you, I don't think they're as, they're as well done as they are on the Sega CD. But I didn't find a whole lot of creativity with the, uh, with the enemy formations that came at you. The majority of your effort in this game is generally spent on defeating the end bosses. Although I like Sylphid on the PlayStation 2, and I do highly recommend this game for those of you that like shooting games, I prefer Sylphid on the Sega CD. It's nowhere near as good graphically, but I think the gameplay was more fun, the music was far better, and I think there was a lot more creativity that went into the level design. All that being said, you should buy this game and Sylphid on the Sega CD. They will both pale in comparison to my fictional made-up game of Wind Squid, which will have a soundtrack of bagpipes. And will have a more engaging plot where Wind Squid actually has to fight himself because his alternate personality through a fourth dimensional warp in space somehow ingested Tetrion particles while going backwards through a wormhole underneath Ohio. So throughout the whole game, we're never sure if Wind Squid is the hero or the villain, if it's a tragedy or a comedy. However, with end bosses like Zarnamazanazox, Wind Squid will have the largest collection of bad guys with X's and Z's in their name ever. And that should make it the greatest video game ever. Period. Oh.